What's up everybody, this is Maddie Mo, and today we're gonna be talking about whether you should buy a new computer with a Broadwell CPU or wait for Skylake. You know when you go to the store to buy a computer, you see a sticker in front of it that says i5 or i7. Those i5s and i7s get refreshed every year to add speed improvements and power consumption improvements as well. Last year it was called Haswell, and the biggest thing with Haswell is that it offered amazing power consumption. So if you bought like a MacBook in 2014, you're probably getting about like 9 to 12 hours of battery life, which was a big achievement for Intel. Now this year they're releasing two types of CPU architectures, Broadwell which was just released recently and later on this year or early Q1 of 2016 they're releasing Skylake. So let's talk about Broadwell first. Broadwell has already been released and it's starting to ship out in a few laptops such as Dell's XPS line. Now the first thing you're going to notice is it's going to have better battery life. It's going to be using Intel's 14 nanometer technology. And Intel estimates that you're going to get an extra 1 to 1.5 hours of battery life, which roughly estimates to be about 10% improvement. The second thing you're going to notice is that you're going to be able to play 4K video on its integrated graphics chip. Now obviously if you're a gamer this is not a big deal, you're still going to go out and buy a discrete graphics card nonetheless. The third thing is you're not going to really see any significant speed improvements, especially using desktop applications such as Excel and Word and so on and so forth. You'll probably only see about a 4% increase from Haswell's CPU architecture. And finally, Broadwell is coming in different types. Right now they just released Broadwell-U, which basically means it's a dual core chip. So if you're waiting for a quad core CPU, you're going to have to wait until sometime in mid-2015. So let's talk about Skylake now. It's supposed to be released at the end of 2015 or sometime in Q1 of 2016. It's a complete architecture refresh. You're no longer going to be able to use the 1150 pin interface. You're going to have to go out and buy a new motherboard that supports 1151. Now with that being said, we actually haven't seen a PC using the Skylake architecture. Because it's a new architecture, we can expect performance gains of at least 10% and above. And if you've been around and following the past four years, performance gains each year have been really, really poor. So we're really hoping that Skylake will offer those big performance improvements. So here's what we know that's going to be included with Skylake. Wireless charging, which is obviously not a big deal if you're a tablet or cell phone user, but for laptops and ultrabooks, that's a welcome addition. The second thing you're going to notice is wireless displays. You'll need to carry a cord around with you. As long as the monitor supports it, you can use that monitor as an external monitor wirelessly. The third thing you're going to notice is that Skylake will support DDR4 RAM, which is another big speed improvement. And finally, the integrated graphics card will be really really fast. You'll probably still need a discrete graphics card if you're a heavy gamer but it's a welcome improvement for those of you who don't really care to game too often. So here's the bottom line. If you need the best battery life possible and money is a no object to you, then buy a laptop or an ultrabook with a Broadwell CPU. For everybody else, wait until Broadwell becomes more mainstream and then look for a deal on a computer that uses the Haswell CPU architecture. Also, if you're using a Haswell computer, there's really no reason to upgrade. You're not going to see that big of an improvement and it's only going to be around 4%, which is really minimal. Now if you need a quad core computer, I suggest waiting until mid 2015 until Broadwell's announced and then again picking up a Haswell quad core machine. You'll probably save a few bucks. Now if you can wait another year, I really really recommend completely skipping Broadwell altogether. A lot of manufacturers are doing the same thing. Skylake is supposed to offer the biggest improvements that we have seen to the Intel architecture in the past 4 or 5 years. So I hope I answered your question on whether or not you should buy a computer using the Broadwell architecture or wait for Skylake. If there's anything you want to add to this, please leave it in the comments below. As always guys, thank you so much for watching this. If you guys enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And I'll see everybody in the next one.